Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. Well today I thought I would show you how to go about making a procedural city using the geometry nodes in Blender which is a really powerful tool and you can do a lot with it but something I found really cool to create with it are these very simple but very effective looking cities where you control the density, the shape, the layout of cities very very easily uh, without loads of faffing around just a couple of tweaks to some of these settings once you get it all set up and you have complete control over it to get something looking like this and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this simple setup without any materials uh, but also having a look at how to create these sort of city lights down on the street level as well. If you are interested in how to make the materials for the buildings as well I will also go into that on another tutorial so please let me know in the comments if you're interested but for now let's get started with our scene. So let's go ahead and open a new blank scene up we're going to delete our default cube and before we do anything, let's change our light to a sun and under shadow, check contact shadow. It's always a good thing I think to do for setting up a scene and just change that strength down to five because a thousand will just wash everything out. Let's add a mesh, add a plane, scale it by five for no reason whatsoever. And that's gonna act as our base for the city. Now, if we switch over to the shading tab, that probably gives us the best default layout for the windows we're gonna be using. So just go to shading and you'll see our scene set up here in the material preview. And what we want to do is add a mesh and add a single cube, bring that up on the z-axis by one, and we're just going to move this off to the side. This is going to act as one of our buildings we're going to use to procedurally populate that plane with. Now I'm just going to turn on cavity within our viewer here, just so we can see the edges a bit more, and we're going to duplicate this cube with shift D, move this over so we've got a couple of variations to work with. Now going back to our plane here, before we go into any detailing on the cubes, we're going to select our plane and change the shader editor over to the geometry node editor add a new system what this is giving us here is basically it's saying group input which is our plane and the group output which is what it's going to be putting on top of the plane now we want to obviously tell it what to add in the middle here so what we want to do is say yeah we want the cube to appear on the plane in the middle so what we're going to do is go shift a and we're going to add first of all an attribute and an attribute randomize and then we're going to go to shift a add a point and a point distribute node that's going to go before the randomize and then add and a point instant node as well so it's going to go point distribute attribute randomize and then point instance at the end connect the geometry to the point distribute distribute to the randomize randomize to the instance and if we connect this straight to geometry you see our plane disappears and that's because we're basically replacing the plane with whatever object we're going to select here which we want to be our cube but it's basically saying we only want the cube to appear we don't want the plane obviously that's not true we want a ground so we want to mix the plane with this new cube we're adding in so go to add geometry join geometry node i'm going to connect the group input into the top one that point instance to the second connect them both and you'll see if we move the density down to zero we got our plane here as well and it will also add the cubes on top now these cubes are way too big so what we want to do is change the attribute randomized to vector type in scale to the attribute and what this will allow us to do is manually control how big and small we want the cubes to be as you can see they're still way too big so we want the minimum value will be how small the smallest cube will be and the max to be how big the biggest one will be now zero is nothing which means that some cubes might not be appearing at all so let's add in a small number like 0.1 and then the max to be 0.2 which is looking pretty good but Maybe it's slightly too big still. But it, you see if we increase the density now, it's going to add more cubes in. But let's change this down to maybe something like 0 0.05. And it's looking pretty good. Now, one thing we want to actually do is press Control A and apply the scale because we've scaled the plane up by five. And now you'll see the cubes are all appearing in the size. They should be relative to the plane. And that's looking pretty good. You see if we uh, change the settings now for the Z axis on the max, we can control the height and the X and Y, we can change how stretchy they are. Now this is up to you obviously how you want to stylize your city, but I try and keep them maybe in a sort of cube looking shape. And for this sort of mass of smaller buildings, we want the Z to be quite low as well. Now let's just rename these cubes first of all. We want one to be small building and the other to be tall building. At the moment, it doesn't matter which one you change it to because they both look exactly the same. Now what we want to do is we've got our low level base of cubes down here but what we want to do is populate some taller cubes in as well. So the way we want to do that is duplicate 
the geometry node setup we have, which is selecting these three, press Shift D to move them down, and we want to reconnect everything again. So if we connect these two from the geometry to the point distribute, now a little trick you can do here actually is if you press Control and then click through, you can actually create a little point so that the lines aren't intersecting with everything, which I find is a really useful technique. Now we want to duplicate that join geometry, join these two setups we've got and then connect that up there again. So we're basically combining these two geometry setups and saying all of this needs to be applied to the plane. Now what we can do, this whole, these three nodes under the bottom are all separate. So we can change the density, change the seed, change the scaling and it will be completely separate from the one we've got above. So we can have maybe less buildings but have them taller. And this just gives us that control. If we switch over to material preview, and actually make sure you switch on ambient occlusion, bring that distance up, turn the bloom on, turn the screen space reflections up. And you'll see that, yeah, we've got a nice mix of a load of smaller buildings and then fewer taller buildings. Just adds that nice bit of variety in there. If we add a new plane and scale it up by five, um, just so we get a nice sort of base there stretching up further. And there we go. That's kind of the basic setup for our city, really. But what we're going to do, I mean, this is as far, really, this is the, the core theory behind it. So take this if you want and go crazy with it. But I'm going to show you a few more little details you can do now. So obviously, we've got two different cubes. What we might want to do now is start detailing our models. So you can really customize them to look how you want. So if we select this cube, which is tool building, and you'll see it will select on the plane which ones are the tool building. We can add some loop cuts in with Control R. With the face select tool press alt and shift and we can select these sort of rings of faces and then pressing alt e we can extrude along the normals bring them in a bit and then you'll see that on all of the cubes that are being distributed from the geometry node setup um, it will start changing the same way we can insert here with i maybe rotate that roof bit and it's just adding a bit more detail into that city now, so they're not just playing cubes. And that's looking really nice. And we can do the same sort of thing with the smaller building, maybe just press I to insert that roof there. And then press S to scale along the X axis. And then E to extrude up, just so we've got a bit of, bit more detailing. And go as crazy as you want with the detailing, of course. Uh, but that's sort of basic enough, I think, for now, just to add that little, more, little bit more extra detail in there. Just looking nice. We can just populate that density a bit more for both of these, really push the city up. But what's great about this now, if we scale this up by two and then press Control A to apply the scale, it will reapply the settings and you'll see we get more buildings in the density and our city is getting much bigger. And you could keep scaling up bigger and bigger, keep applying that scale and you can have a huge, huge city. And that's looking really cool. Like it just with two cubes that we've made, we've now populated randomly this, this city. I'm just going to add a material here just so not everything's <laughs> as bright white. Just bring the color down to sort of a darker gray. Just select those two cubes. And remember, everything you do to those two cubes will automatically apply an update to the entire city, which is really, really cool. Just the power and freedom you have over it to really quickly make changes that are really going to affect the city without having to go in and manually change everything bit by bit. You can just change one thing about the cube and everything will update. Now, what we might want to do now is we're going to add some roads in, you know, add some sort of city lights down on the street below. So let's add a mesh, add a plane, scale it up by 10, which will be the size of the, the city because we scaled it by five and then scaled it by two. And let's bring this plane up so we can see what we're doing. Now the material we want to create here, a little technique we want to do where we basically want to add an emission shader to act as the lights, but then we want to use a transparent shader as well in order to cut away. Now this technique, you can use it for a whole load of things. You can make grates, you can make sort of digital cells if you want, but for now we're using it to make cities, but just I want you to use your imagination. Think about what else you could do with it. I might make some other tutorials on that, but essentially what we want to do is if we add a shader in, add a mix shader, we want to say, we want to mix the two together. But before we do this, actually, we need to go to material and change the blend mode to alpha blend. And let's change the shadow mode to none because we don't really want any shadows. Now what this will do, if we change the factor, you'll see it will switch between the glow of the emission and the transparency. 
which even that on its own looks pretty cool. I don't know what you could use that for, but there you go, there's an idea. Um, but obviously we don't want it to be all or nothing. We want to basically cut out the emission using a, a texture. So let's add a texture in, a Voronoi texture, pop that in there. And then what we also want to do is add a converter, a color ramp, so we have control over how harsh the sort of cutaway is. And plug that color into the factor. And you'll see now if we bring this uh, scale up and then bring the black value up on the color ramp, we're starting to cut away the transparency is using that texture in order to figure out where it wants to cut away. And that looks really cool. I mean, not for the city that we're creating, but again, just uh, something might inspire you for something. Let's bring that randomness down to zero. And if we press Control T on the Voronoi texture, it will bring up a mapping node and we can further control the scale even greater. Now what we want to do here actually is we want to stretch this texture, we want to stretch it. But before we do that, let's change this Voronoi texture to 4D instead of 3D. Change this to Chebyshev. And we're getting this grid sort of texture. If we increase the randomness on it and bring the white down so the emission is coming through harsher. Now what we want to do is switch over to the scale on the mapping node and like I said before, really stretch the Y to a high number and then bring the X value down to something really, really small, like 0.1, not zero necessarily, but something, something like 0.1. So we get these really nice sort of stretchy lines that are a bit randomized, they're not completely straight. And just bring those values up. And this is up to you how you want it to look. Change it how you want. Gonna bring that randomness down a little bit. And let's change the emission color to be an orange, something a bit more sort of like street lights glowing in the city. And that's looking pretty good. I mean, this is up to you now how you want it to look. So we've got the lines going one way, but if we select the plane, shift D to duplicate, rotate on the Z by 90, select both of the planes now, and let's move them down onto the city layer, sort of street level, I guess. Just have a look there, get it in line. So although these objects are completely separate, because they're using the same material there, what we can do is continue to adjust the settings. Actually, let's just rename these so we know that both these planes are the, the right ones. So although they're completely separate objects, they're using the same material. So what we can do actually is once we've selected uh, our material, we can just change the scale again and it will change it for both of the planes so we can make the streets as detailed or as uh, simple as we want to. Remove that density there, we can see what's going on. And yeah, you just get this kind of cool looking grid city, a bit more sci-fi than normal, I guess. Um, but yeah, this sort of sci-fi looking street view. And what we could do actually is if we uh, duplicate these and bring them up, what you could do is create the illusion of, you know, spaceships, or almost like higher layer city traffic through sort of spaceships flying around, a bit like Coruscant in Star Wars. And, um, if we just bring the uh, the black value up so there's not so much of it, kind of get the illusion, yeah, that there's sort of traffic floating through the uh, through the sky. Um, if you were to animate the location of the mapping node, you could create the illusion that traffic is moving. But yeah, just a little tip there. If you're interested in creating flying spaceships from far away, you know, obviously up close it's not going to hold up, but from far away, sort of bird's eye view of the city, that would work. That's looking pretty cool, but uh, anyway, that's the, the floating traffic. We'll, we'll get rid of that. If you just want it under, as a base level traffic, we can delete that, keep that traffic down on the bottom. But let's change the uh, material of this plane here to be that dark gray as well, so we can actually see what's what's going on here. There we go, that, that's much better. And there you go, really. You've got your uh, your basic city, nice and complex, just by using two really, really simple cubes. What we could do as well maybe is add an array modifier to this taller building and you'll see again everything will update immediately but let's change the z the x to zero and push it up on the z and we'll get a nice bit of extra height on those buildings without stretching the geometry too much because we're using the array modifier so we could maybe bring the uh, scale down and we're still getting that nice bit of height without stretching the geometry Another thing we could do also, we've got two layers of the city here. We've got low buildings and high, but we could add a third layer and we could bring these ones down to create sort of a mid-tier building. Duplicate this again. 
and exactly the same technique as before link these up together move that over and then just joining the geometry so now we're going to join the middle layers of the bottom these up together and yet again we can change this separate bottom set of nodes and they will update completely independently of their own change the seeds bring the scale up and now we've got low level buildings mid tier scale buildings and then you know really tall sort of stand up buildings on their own and you can keep going with this you can keep adding more building types more layers more densities different varieties of buildings and just go crazy with it just keep adding or changing whatever you want it's up to you there you go you've got your very simple and easy to control building creator nice and easy i hope this video was helpful in creating a basic setup for a city if you found it useful please do give the video a like and subscribe for more content like this i'd really appreciate it let me know in the comments of any other tutorials you're interested in seeing and that's it for now i've been toby and i'll see you all in the next video Thank you.